Michael, how come the water's coming out in a little column like that? Because the gravity's pulling it down. Well, I mean, the, that's why it's going down, but why is it in a little column, like a little tube? Because of the water tension. Water tension? Well, surface tension. Surface tension, okay. What's that? Well, it's... Well, I can't explain it, but I can show you what I mean, kind okay, of. Okay, go ahead. What do you okay. want to do? What you have to do is take this. Oh, I see. Okay. You got to put it all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the top, there's kind of a, a little bubble over well, glass. Well, it's, it's, you pour it so that the water is heaped up above the top of, yeah. the, of the glass, right? Okay. Now, scientists think that the reason for that is that the molecules on the surface of the water are packed closer together, so the surface acts sort of like an invisible elastic skin called surface tension. What's that got to do with pouring? Well, when, when you're pouring something, the surface tension, or that little mm -hmm. skin, it keeps it all together. Right, in a little column like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now I have another problem for you. Pour it the other way, from the glass into the pitcher. Yeah, what's, what's going on there? Like, well, the water is sticking onto the glass. Water sticks to the glass? Yeah. It does? Yeah. How did you know about water sticking well, to the glass? When, when you spray something on a window, like when you spray water mm -hmm. on a window, it sticks to the window. Yeah, these little tiny droplets yeah. all over the place, yeah. Well, then, then in order to pour it, you have to either pour it quickly like that, or you can use a scientific trick. You said that water and glass sort of stick to each other. Yeah. Put the little glass rod across like that and pour using the glass rod sort of as a spout. Okay. Like that. Now, if you pour carefully, that could be a dangerous chemical, for example, and it'll run right down the glass rod, and there you go. You can pour very nicely. So scientists use that in the laboratory all the time to pour out of a beaker. I see. Now I have a challenge for you. Challenge? Based on this idea, right. Here's a stool. I'd like you to get on the stool. Okay. Here's a pitcher with a quarter of a cup of water in it. I'll dump the rest out, and I'll put the glass down here in the middle of the sink, and now I want you to pour the water from there into the glass. I can't. Why not? Because I need um, a glass rod or something. So, or something. I, so happens I already, to the... A string? The, yes, a piece of wet string. Now, if I may make a suggestion, that you pour backwards. In other words, put it like this, so that the string comes out of the spout, and now turn it around. Like, like, like this? Like that. Okay. okay. Now, you see, you can pour down the string. Okay. okay. Get it all Let's set. Get it all While here. you're getting that set, I'll get a glass, which I will hold under here just in case. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, go ahead. There it goes. One drop. Two drops. Ah, it's going all the way down. See it? I can hear it, though. Yeah. Would that work with a dry string? Um, well, you could try it, but I don't think so. Because you need water to stick to water. Right. Three drops. Getting there almost. Just empty. Three drops so far. If you pour too fast, you'll drip it, right? Aha, congratulations. You poured water about four feet through the air with the help of a piece of string, and you only spilled three drops.